Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting flower vines and butterfly and I'm sipping on some elderberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, fluorescent pink, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush. And I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video in the video description I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process one of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between so that's there there's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are blue and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a gradient that's gonna be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So I'm gonna start with just my cobalt blue on my brush. I'm gonna be using a left to right brush stroke. And I'm just gonna put that on for maybe, you know, an inch and a half, two inches. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my cobalt blue plus white on my brush. So about equal parts and a good amount of both colors. And I'm gonna to continue to do this left to right brush stroke. I'm going to get this section to blend in with the section above it. And how I do that is I'm gonna cross over from one section to the other like this. And I just keep moving my brush back and forth left to right. If that doesn't blend it as much as you want it to, you can always do this fun like diagonal type of a brush stroke as it's um, wet and then go back and forth. So that'll help blend it a little bit more. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, every time I come down another section, I'm gonna be picking up more white and less blue. So this time I just have a little bit of blue plus a lot of white on my dirty brush. And then a minute, I'll stop picking up my blue altogether. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a natural gradient down this sky so it blends in from the dark to the light down to the bottom and looks nice and natural. And I'm just kind of going back and forth like this. That looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna start picking up just white without washing my brush. Cause I do have a good amount of blue left in the bristles of my brush. So this will allow me to get it to go light as it comes down towards the bottom, but not all the way white. I don't want it to go all the way white because I am going to be having some white details later on my on my trellis and on my flowers so if my background is all the way white the white on the future objects won't pop as well <laughs> so i know that from experience so i'm going to leave uh, this background light blue so it will um, allow for that that contrast in 
colors as I go towards the front of the painting or the, the part that's closest to the viewer. And then I just keep picking up white. If yours is all the way white by, or does turn all the way white by the time you're down at the bottom, you can certainly add a touch of cobalt blue to, to the mixture or just kind of push your brush a little bit harder and you'll release some of that color that's within your bristles. And then you just kind of keep going back and forth till it blends as much as you want to. We are going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away. Just go back and forth one more time here. I love just going back and forth. It just seems to smooth out my gradients all that much better. And then once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our trellis or with, our, I'm doing a lattice trellis <laughs> for our trellis. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and we'll connect those markers and we'll have something that we can utilize during the coloring and process of painting. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So before you start this step, you can either take an extra long break if you'd like to, or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start myself with a big square, and then I'm gonna make markers and connect the markers in order to give myself a nice um, symmetrical type of structure for my beautiful plants and flowers to climb up. After I give you the markers and stuff, if you wanted to, you could certainly use either a ruler or some kind of straight edge piece of cardboard or something like that to give yourself some straight lines. But I will give you kind of cues on how to do this without using um, a straight edge kind of aid. We'll be able to connect these dots all by yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, that's right about here. And I'm not sure, now that I'm looking at my white chalk on this light canvas that you will be able to see it well enough. So I'm gonna actually switch to a darker color cho uh, chalk. So this way you'll be able to see a little bit better. So that's where I'm gonna start right in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up from that about two inches, give myself another marker. So I'm gonna have my square, my initial square is gonna be about 12 inches wide by 12 inches tall. My canvas is 16 inches wide. So I'm gonna travel over to the right from here until I'm about two inches away from the edge of my canvas. So somewhere in through here. If you needed to be certain that this is at the same height as this, you could always use your brush or some kind of other measuring tool as a matter of fact, mine's exactly as long as my brush, to make sure that you have this marker the same distance from the top of your canvas. This is gonna allow you to have a nice horizontal line. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna come about two inches away from the edge of my canvas at the same height as this one. And then I can just connect those with a horizontal line. You could make as many markers at this distance away from the top of your canvas that would help you in making that line. So you could have made, you know, 26 different dots along that line at the same distance from the top of your canvas that will allow you to get a nice horizontal line without using an aid of a ruler or a straight edge. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the bottom of my canvas and make another marker at the same distance that this one is away from the edge of my canvas. So I can use my brush again as a measuring tool, something like that, and I can come all the way down to the bottom, give myself a marker at the same distance. And again, I could make as many markers up at that same distance that I want. And then once I've done that, I can connect that top marker to the bottom marker with a pretty straight line. It doesn't have to be perfect. You'll be able to modify um, during the coloring and process and chalk is beautiful because you can erase it very easily. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So however far I've got that marker from the edge, I come all the way down to the bottom, give myself another marker, and then I can connect those. And again, you could make a bunch of markers along the way to give you that um, better shot at getting it pretty darn straight. Then what I'm gonna do is I want to make another 
square that's on the exterior of this one that's about an inch away. So you can, again, make as many markers as you want. So I'm going to go about an inch away. And again, you could certainly measure away from here or from the top, however many markers you need to aid yourself in giving yourself a good shot at getting a nice, pretty symmetrical or even line, something like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to actually bring this out until it's about an inch away from the edge of my canvas. And then again, measure how close or how far away that is from the edge of my canvas. Make as many markers going down as you want to and then just connect those. So what I'm doing is I'm making the exterior structure of my trellis that's gonna allow me to have, build those little slats in between. I'm gonna bring this out till it's about an inch away from the edge of my canvas, measure how far away that is from the edge, come down to the bottom, or as many markers as you want to help you get that line pretty straight and I like to keep my eye on the prize, which is the, oop, my chalk just broke in half. <laughs> keep my eye on the prize, which is the next marker, and that helps guide my hand into that marker. And then what I'm gonna do, I wanna put an arch at the top. So I want this piece, this arch, to be about as wide as this. So I can just kind of come right up from this corner here, like that, and like that. And I can do the same thing on this side, come up like this, straight up like this. And I'm going to go from the center, which we already kind of identified as being here. I'm going to go straight up until I'm like an inch and a half away from the top of my canvas and then go up another inch. So this width is an inch, this is an inch, and this is an inch. And now I can just take it and guide myself into an arch or an arc, whatever you want to call it, for the, for the top of the trellis. So once I've got this... Um, arch arc on here I could kind of measure along the way just to see if it's you know I've got the same width being an inch around each um, each side but you'll be able to disguise things that are imperfect with flowers and <laughs> so don't feel the need to to make this completely perfect so something like that now I've got to make all of my little wood pieces in between so I'm going to have um, kind of a a diagonal type of a decorative structure up top. So I'm going to use this marker here and go straight up top here. I'm going to make myself just a vertical line like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this little arch in here into three sections. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I'll do the same thing over on this side. One, to. You could certainly measure it out if you want to or just eyeball it and then you're going to connect these markers to this little section here. So just a diagonal line like that, a diagonal line there, we got a diagonal line here and here. And that's all I'm going to do up top. Now down below what I'm going to do is I'm going to make diagonal lines. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch square so what I can do is I can I'm going to cut it in even um, about two inches apart. So I've got that. And then you can, e you can eyeball it if you want to. You're just going to go a third and a third. So from the center, you go a third and a third. And I'm going to do that on every single one. So I'm going to go about halfway here. And then I'm going to go a third and a third. Or these are all two-inch sections. So a third and a third. You can do it here in the middle, a third and a third, or again, two inches. I'm going two inches apart on each one. And then I've got my bottom, which is gonna be somewhere in here. And then a third, a third, a third, and a third. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our dots all diagonally. So I'm gonna take this from here to here. And all I'm doing right now is connecting all of my dots. And what's going to happen is I'm, I'm, in essence, creating a diagonal type of a grid that I'm going to be able to use as my structure. You want to do the corners, too. So you got to count the corners as a marker as well. So this is going corner to corner. I'm using this structure 
be it wobbly as some of them may be, to um, create my lattice. So I'm just doing a, a single line with my chalk. I know that the pieces of wood that I'm gonna be creating or painting are gonna be wider than my chalk line. So in the areas where I'm wobbly, I'm okay with that because I'm gonna be able to disguise it with when, when I paint. I just wanna make sure I kinda of have from point to point or as close as I can get without using a, um, an, a, an aid, which if you want to, you certainly can. You can pick up a, um, like I said, a ruler or a straight edge piece, piece of cardboard to help you along. Uh, but for me, I know that, again, during my painting process, I'll be able to kind of help make these, get these to look a little bit straighter and I can disguise anything I want with flowers or butterflies or leaves or vines, whatever I want. So I'm just in, gonna enjoy the process and whatever imperfections happen, I'm going to embrace. And then once we've got this done, we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you could certainly fiddle with this all you want, make any little adjustments to your lines that you feel might be um, beneficial to you and then you can put your piece of chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our lattice. I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, white, yellow, and pink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a custom tan color that I'll be using for my base coat. So I have magically pre-mixed my color and I'll show you how I got there. This is it right here. How I got to this was I used brown and white to make tan, but I know that for me, my tan with just the burnt umber and white is gonna be a little on the dull side, almost more like a light gray type of a color. So in order to bring a little bit of richness to this, I can add a little bit of pink and a little bit of yellow. So think of the yellow and pink as like an orange type of a tone and mixing that together with the dull tan that I created with my burnt umber is gonna create this nice rich kind of golden tan type of a color. So this is what I'm gonna be using because I feel like my scene is sun drenched so I wanted to have a little bit more of a golden tone to my tan as opposed to a grayish tone. So this is what I'm headed for. Once I've got that color that I desire, I'm just gonna sit here and paint in the whole thing. So I'm gonna be, um, creating pretty clean or crisp edges to all of my pieces. So I will be have it using a lot of paint on my brush, but if there are times where I feel that the quantity of paint is not um, giving me my clean enough lines, what I can do is use a little bit of water on my brush to give me um, more chance of getting that paint to kind of sink into those little crevices of the canvas as well as give me a nice clean line. The only downfall with using um, water or liquid medium in your paint is it may become too transparent or too translucent for you. So if that's the case, you may need to do more than one layer in a particular area just to make sure that you don't have it see-through. I'm also going to, I'm gonna keep this structure exactly as it is, but I'm gonna put two extra pieces on the left and the right that are gonna be just above here. So I'm gonna do that now so you can see what, um, what I'm adding to this. So I'm gonna just kind of pop out a little extra decorative um, piece, one right in through here. I'm gonna bring it out to the right just a little bit and then I'll do it on the other side as well. This is just a little decorative element that I wanted to have on my, um, on my lattice fence part. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just thought it would be just a nice little, kind of like at the top of fence posts, how sometimes there's a little topper um, at the top part of it. So that's what I'm doing on these guys. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow this painting in process for the entire, um, 
the entire structure, but it is going to get a little bit monotonous for you to watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the fast forward button in a minute and you can see me painting this in, doing my line work in kind of a sped up way. And then we'll come back on the other side. So I, it's not perfect, but I think it's definitely a great base for us to paint our um, final details on our trellis. So once you've got this done, you can make any little modifications that you want. We're going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the trellis. I'm gonna, I said I was gonna use my medium brush, but I'm actually gonna use my medium and my small brush. I'm gonna be doing some highlights and shadows, and I think the shadows are gonna be easier to do with my small brush. So the colors that I'm gonna use are white, my pre-mixed tan, and brown and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself kind of a darkish, dark grayish type of a color for, um, some of the sh for one type of the shadow then we'll use brown for another type of shadow <laughs> and then we're going to use white for our highlight so i'm going to pre-mix myself a gray color that i'm going to be first using for a shadow this is it right here how i got to this was i used my pre-mixed tan and i added a little bit of black to it so this is going to give me a nice shadowy color for um the for the wood of the of the trellis so this is the color i'm going for and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be making a, a bunch of lines that are going to be on the shadow side of each one of these pieces of wood so my my light source is up above and maybe to the right a little <laughs> so all my pieces are going to have a shadow underneath them and on the side that's away from the light source so for instance these pieces right here I'm going to put a shadow right underneath them so I'm in essence just kind of outlining the bottom of that piece of wood for this tall for this long arcing piece I'm just going to put a dark line underneath it and you could certainly when you're when you're doing the um these shadowy type of lines I like to use them as a way to to clean up other lines because this is one of those paintings that is just very linear and you've got lots of um, edges that you, if you want them to be clean now you know this is a great step to clean them up these guys in through here I'm gonna have these two on the left side and I'm gonna have the the center one is not gonna get a shadow because I feel that it would catch light on both sides. I guess you could put shadow on both sides if you want, but I'm opting to keep it light. And then I'm gonna um, just do a shadow in through here. You could even pull these shadows a little bit into this center if you wanted to. I'm gonna put a shadow on this side in through here. You could, I suppose, have been using the medium brush for these upper ones, but I know it's gonna be a lot easier on the lower ones to do my smaller brush. This big piece right here, I'm just going to go right across the bottom of it. And again, this helps to clean up lots of those edges. And again, I'm going to be using my um, flowers and all kinds of other stuff to, to hide any imperfections, but this is one of those steps that helps start that process. So all of these guys down here, I'm not going to really touch well i guess i could put it on left but i think i'm going to keep these nice and bright i'm going to put lots of shadow in through here so all of these little guys in through here i'm going to be hitting the ones that are going in this direction i'm just going to put a shadow on the bottom of um that little piece so i'm going to go pretty fast i'm just going to kind of do these 
quick little lines on this side of these pieces. You could, you know, do this in whatever um, order that you wanted. This is just one of those steps that as I create the painting going through, going through these um, just kind of systematic order works for me, but if you wanted to do it in a different order, you could certainly do that. And I'm just going on this one spot of the, of the square. And then once I've got this done, I'm going to do another shadow that will help to make the front pieces of this lattice pop out. So these are just little tricks that, although I'm not doing a whole bunch of um, technical detailed work, because I'm opting to take the time to just put these little shadows in what I believe to be a believable spot, even if they're not perfect, I'm giving the the quick illusion that this is a three-dimensional object. So I don't have to, when, when I'm creating these paintings, if I want to give them that depth and that dimension and that feel of having you know, life to them and, and, and li that little realistic illusion without bringing it to a photorealistic place, just using these, these little tricks, I guess, for lack of a better term, or taking these um, things that would happen in real life and just injecting them a little bit, even if it's not the, you know, again, not to a photorealistic place, just injecting it a little bit is going to really help to sell that story of it being, you know, a representation of something that is lifelike and believable. And then when you go to add all the other elements on top of it, you've got this great believable base to work from. And then once I've got these little guys in through here, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put brown paint on to get a little bit of a, a opposing type of shadow. That'll be a shadow made by these um, pieces onto these pieces. So this is just brown and I'm opting to use a different color than the shadow that I just did in order to, again, just give it a little bit of diversity and make it feel like it's a different kind of shadow. So this time I'm just gonna kind of skip these guys in through here. So this is just little dashes on these uh, pieces going in this direction. So again, I could use, I could have used the same shadow color that I used um, for the first step. Oops, I'm, I think I'm running my hand through some wet paint. <laughs> so okay, we'll hide that with some flowers. Um, but because I'm using brown as opposed to that gray, it'll give it just a little bit different of a uh, illusion, so to speak. So once I've got these done, and you can see right now, it's automatically making that that exterior piece pop out, and we're gonna make that exterior piece pop out even more in a minute. But I'm just gonna fly through these little guys. And I have a shaky hand, and I have, um, we're doing a really small spot right now, so I tend to rest my hand either on my canvas or on my, um, my easel, you could certainly, uh, obviously if you ha are struggling with these little tiny lines, you can see that mine are not perfect. They definitely carry a, um, you know, a rustic look to them. <laughs> but if you needed yours to be perfect, you could certainly, you know, tape things off. You could use rulers, all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna switch brushes now to my medium brush. I'm gonna do my highlights. So I'm just gonna be using white paint for my highlights. You could certainly use white plus your um, your that tan color if you wanted to, if you didn't want yours to be as bright as mine, but I want mine to be pretty, pretty bright. So I just picked up white paint and I'm gonna put it up at the top of my piece and through here. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white just so I can get all the way up to that edge. And again, this is time where you get to clean up things if you need to. Um, and if you wanted to get this to blend a little bit more, you could certainly pick up your base tan. I'm gonna pick up more white and do a nice bright highlight here and here. And then I'm gonna do the opposing side on these guys here. So again, just kind of streaks 
of my white paint. I don't need to do much. I probably should have started on the other side so I don't run into wet paint, but we're just gonna kind of give this one one down the middle and then I'm just going on the opposing side of where I had that shadow. And again, imperfect highlights are fabulous. This can, you know, represent an old piece of wood. Maybe this trellis has been here for a while and it's got chips and stuff on it. You can imagine it to be whatever you want. And again, oh, that was a little, a little out of my line. Um, if you needed to or wanted to, like I feel like I want to pick up some of my tan. So I just picked up a little bit of my tan just to get this to kind of be a more soft one in the front here. Yeah, that, that looks good to me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go down these sides, just picking up some more white. I'm gonna just do a nice big streak down this side as if it's catching a big old highlight from the atmosphere. And again, you could blend it if you wanted to, but I've got so many other things that are coming on top of this that I feel if I, you know, I, I don't need it perfect. I just want to have these highlights in here. And then I'm going to do it just on, I'm going to do a long streak just on these um, ones that are going uh, in this direction. So I just have white paint and really I'm just going to kind of streak it down. Streak it down right in the center of those. I don't even need to hit it all the way. Just kind of giving myself a little bit of a highlight down these. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using... Let's see, what are we going to use for the next step? We're going to use the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. I can get these done and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for our vines and our leaves, the green leaves. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, green, and yellow. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be kind of using my vines to steer the um, footprint of where I'm gonna have my flowers. And it's also going to give me kind of um, a trailing substance of sorts around the, the trellis itself. So if I wanna have a lot of flowers it, let's say a couple of flowers up and through here and down on this right hand side I'm gonna put my my vines traveling through there for me I am gonna have a lot of flowers kind of traveling up and maybe into the center area then I'm gonna have some kind of coming up around here I'll also have a couple down in this corner so I'll have my vines kind of going farther. So I'll have some vines kind of wrapping around the top. I'll have some vines kind of wrapping around these pieces in through here and maybe up this side a little bit. I'm gonna start with my vines first. So I'm gonna be using just brown paint to kind of get them wrapped in and out of my, my trellis. So an easy kind of way to think about this is just think of it as like a piece of rope. So you can take it and just kind of bring it in through here and then it disappears behind that piece of um, that piece of wood. We are going to be doing another layer on these later so as you're doing them if your paint is see-through as mine is don't worry about that you can um, we'll be able to make that go away later but you can do these little kind of curly cues you can have the vines kind of wrapping around anything you want want them to know that a lot of these vines are going to get hidden as well with your with your plants so don't feel the need to you know make it terribly complicated because you're going to hide a lot of it later <laughs> but just kind of having that thought process maybe it goes behind there and then it re-emerges here and you know you can have so much fun kind of getting it to go in and out of the of that um trellis and then i'm going to bring some maybe i'm going to bring this one maybe out from this side and then we're going to come kind of over here because I want to have a big flower kind of in the center of my canvas and then maybe I've got a little one that kind of wraps around here and you don't even have to have them all connecting because again we can hide stuff with um, with flowers so if I just want to 
put a little piece of a vine coming up in through here. I don't need it to connect to anything. I'm just gonna put a big flower right in there. So I'm just gonna put little pieces of my trellis or of my vine going here and there and everywhere and not really concerned if they are touching or if I have get made them connect properly. I'm just getting them to look like they've, you know, they're having fun and they're traveling all around my my uh, trellis. So this one maybe I'll have come down. Maybe we'll do a little. I like these little curly cues. They kind of add a bit of whimsy to the whole composition. So have fun with making those as much as you want. I definitely want to have something kind of coming out and over this area in through here. Maybe it kind of snakes underneath and reemerges over here. I'm going to have my beautiful butterfly over on this left hand side as well. So you can really just have fun with, with however you want to make these. I want that behind it, not in front of it. There we go. Uh, let's see what else. I'm going to put a couple come coming over in through here. And again, make little curly cues every now and again. I'm going to have a big one kind of coming up in this direction. So this is going to come up behind that one and then maybe kind of snake around this one. And again, it's the design of these is totally up to you. As you're doing it, you might find that you're to, you're digging how they're coming out and you just you want more of these vines to take over as opposed to the flowers or as opposed to the leaves. Whatever is visually appealing to you, that's where you want to take your painting because that's what's going to make it the most personal to you. That's going to make it the way that is visually appealing to you and that every time you look at it, you're going to enjoy looking at it and remembering how much fun you had painting it. So that's looking pretty good for the number of vines. And you can always add these little guys later if you feel you, we're going to be doing a second layer on them. So it, when we do that, if you want to add others, you certainly can. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bunch of leaves. So these are going to be the leaves that are just um, where your flowers grow out of. And these particular flowers just had kind of um, almost like teardrop type of shape leaves. So I'm going to do a couple of different tonal values. So I've got brown on my brush. I'm going to pick up green. So I have brown and green on my brush. So I'm going to do some light or some dark ones and work my way to some light ones. So I'm just going to kind of take it and give myself um, these in various spots, these uh, teardrop type of shape leaves. I know that I'm going to have flowers in front of them. But right now, I just want to kind of get an assortment of these leaves in here so I can start my painting process of the flowers on top of them and they, these will make it look like they're behind them. Right now, I just continue to pick up uh, green and I so I still have the little remnants of brown on my brush. This is um, going to give me some darker leaves and then later, I will, in a minute, as I work, the brown off of my brush, I'll start to put some um, some yellow on it. So again, I'm just kind of finding spots that I feel would look good for it to have some leaves popping through. I, again, I know that I'm going to be filling this in with my flowers, so I don't even really need to connect these leaves um, too much at this point. I'm just kind of giving myself an assortment of green areas and they can fill in some of these gaps. You can, you know, have fun. I'm putting them all up this right hand side. Know that you're going to have the um, flowers in front of them as well. Now I'm starting to pick up green and yellow. So this is going to give me some brighter type of um, leaves that will be intermingled with my with my flowers in a little bit. But again, just kind of pulling out these pointy-esque type of um, leaves that if you were to just lay them flat, they would kind of look like little teardrops. You can do little smaller ones. These, and I, you know, these came in all different kinds of colors. So as far as the intensity of the green, but I was noticing as they were coming into the, into the sunshine, they were very yellowy green in tone for this particular flower that I'm doing. So that's why I'm incorporating quite a bit of yellow right now um, in this green, um, 
assortment of leaves, but again, we'll be doing highlights and shadows and making them come to life a little bit more. So I got some up in through here, and right now I am picking up green and yellow, so it doesn't go all the way uh, yellow on me. So right now I've got, again, both green and yellow. And again, you can make these as big as you want. I just ran through some wet brown, which is totally fine for me. That's That'll end up being a nice shadowed leaf underneath my flower. So something like this. And I'm just mindful that I don't overpaint and I don't want my leaves to, you know, take over the whole thing, but I definitely want them to be visible. I want them to take up enough area. And again, be, them being see-through at this point is all right. I'm just putting a bunch of them in where I feel it's gonna look pretty good surrounded by a beautiful big purple flower. And maybe I've got a couple little tiny ones up in through here. And again, you don't have to bring them all the way everywhere, just wherever is visually appealing to you. Maybe we even have maybe one or two kind of popping out over in this little corner over in through here. And then we are going to be using, uh, we're going to use our, let's use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our butterfly. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The color I'm using is just black. So I wanted to have a butterfly that was gonna kind of look pretty powerful and kind of complement the colors in here. So I'm choosing to do this kind of transparent black winged butterfly. It's got a black body and these black wings, but then there's these beautiful iridescent type of colored pattern in the wings. So we're gonna start with just a black base. I'm going to be using thinned out black paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black paint and I'm going to add lots of drops of water in it so it becomes like an ink consistency. I really want it to be nice and transparent so I can create that see-through type of illusion. So you can just keep, you know, adding more water to it until it's got this really thinned out transparency to it. So once you've got it, I would say somewhere in through here, that, that would work out well for you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw my outline of my butterfly. And of course you could draw this out with a pencil or a drawing utensil first if you wanted to. I'm just gonna guide you through um, a couple of markers and hopefully by the time we're done, you'll have something that looks like a butterfly. <laughs> so I'm gonna come, um, if this is the center of my, my line in through the top of my trellis, I'm about halfway between there and here. So somewhere about here, I'm gonna go up from that, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere around here is where I'm gonna start this, this fun butterfly. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm coming up into this section of my um, trellis. So I'm up maybe about three inches, three, three and a half inches and over to the left about an inch, inch and a half. Somewhere up in through here is kind of the top of my, my upper wing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come, um, I would say over to the left here until I'm about an inch away from my um, edge of my trellis and then I'm gonna go up about an inch. So I'm just giving you little markers so we can kind of um, connect the markers. What I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna connect this one to this one with an arcing type of a line. So I'm gonna take it from here and I'm just gonna bring it up like that and just kind of give myself a little connection in through there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one to the top one up and through there. So again, I have very thinned out paint um, and you'll see why I'm opting to do that in a second here. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna come in from this line, maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch right in through here. I'm gonna connect here to here, but it's gonna come down and out and then I'm gonna have a little bit of a wavy line. So I'm gonna take it from here I'm gonna to go to the left, I'm gonna bring it back like this and then down and give it a little bit of a bump out in through there. I'm going to give you another marker in through here. I'm gonna come um, directly below here, a little bit into my trellis and over to the right 
uh, about a half of an inch or maybe directly below here somewhere in that vicinity. <laughs> I'm going to connect this marker to here. This is going to be just a little kind of curved line in through there like something like that. And then I'm going to connect here to here with a kind of a um, a curved line but it's going to have some some extra stuff in it. <laughs> so I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to take it down to about here. I'm going to bring out this little this little bump like that. And then from here to here, I'm going to connect it with these little kind of arcing lines like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my body onto my onto my butterfly. So I'm going to take it from this marker in through here. I'm going to give myself another marker right here. This is going to be the bottom of the body. So I'm going to take this and just give myself a little kind of oval type of a shape, which will represent that the tail part of the body. I'm coloring it in with my um, black paint. It is a little transparent, which is fine by me. I'm going to do the main section of the body now. This is going to be a little bit wider than the tail. So I'm going to take from here and I'm going to give myself a little kind of bubbled out um, oval type of a shape and get it to kind of blend right into here. And then you can just color that part in, something like that. And then I'm going to give myself a couple of little antennas. So I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to not push hard <laughs> and give myself, we're going to give ourselves a couple of little tiny antennas, something like that and like that, little tiny ones. I guess you could put little dots on the end. I think some uh, some butterflies have little dots on the end. I'm going to give myself some legs. So my legs are very tiny. I think they have uh, six legs. So I'm going to take and just kind of give myself a couple kind of coming out the top. You can cross them over one another. That'll make it look a little bit more natural. Or if you want to make it look like, you know, you can only see you know, one of them, that's fine too. I'm going to do the other four are going to kind of come out of this area in through here. And I'm really hardly touching my, um, my canvas just so I can get these real kind of slender legs in through here. And if I make, you know, the wrong number of legs, you won't be able to tell. So now that I've got that, I'm going to make that a blacker in a minute, but I want to take this see-through black paint and color in these two sections. So again, I have see-through black paint. So you can, and because I used a ton of water in it, you can see how you can see that background through it. So think of this as just transparent paint. You can make it um, as see-through or as not see-through as you want. I wanted to really, uh, I thought this illusion was pretty cool, so I wanted to incorporate it. I will be adding more details to it um, on a future step, but this is really just giving me, um, I need to make a little bit more transparent paint for this bottom part. Um, this is just giving me my, my base coat for it. So I have a place to start from and work from and build everything else off of. I've got my shape to the butterfly and then I can, I can modify all the, the details after that. So once you've got this done, we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it. I, I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Hold on one second. You can wash this brush and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our butterfly. I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, blue, pink, and yellow. And I'm going to be making the body more black and have some uh, accentuated details like some polka dots and some colors and I want to do a nice color pattern in the wings themselves. So I want there to be some vibrancy in some of these colors and in order to do that I want to have a lighter or whiter background in, in certain areas specifically on this bottom wing on this back half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush to start and I'm going to be kind of streaking it, 
putting it on and kind of streaking it back towards the inner area of the um, of the wing. So I'm putting it on the end. You can leave a little bit of that black showing along the edges just to so you don't get lost in the painting process and we're also going to be putting little black details on the tips of that wing anyway so if you um, still can see some of that black outline after you're done this step that's fine and again just a little bit of white paint on your brush put it at the tip and then just pull it in towards the um, interior portion of that of that wing and it doesn't have to be a s super smooth blend it can it can be a little um, dry looking that's that's totally fine I'm going to put just a teeny bit in this uh, bottom portion of the top wing as well. So just a little bit in through here because I want to put a tiny bit of color in through there. I'm also going to put a touch of this on the back part of the body. So just a little bit of white on my brush to get a little bit of um, a vibrant undertone for what I want to have the colored portions of the butterfly in a couple minutes. So that's pretty good. As that's drying, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up black paint that is not watered down. So this is uh, just regular black paint. I'm gonna paint in the, uh, the head and the main body part of the, of the cute little butterfly. <laughs> so something like this. So the head and then the main body part like this. Bring, just bring this darkness right underneath to make sure I fill it all the way out. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna put some white polka dots on the body. So I'm picking up white, I washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna put a couple of little white polka dots on the head. Just teeny tiny little white polka dots right along the top of the head. Also along just a little bit on the top of the body in through here. I'm gonna put some down this tail so these are just little tiny white polka dots down that tail. Looks pretty good to me. I'm also going to put a couple of little white polka dots. Uh, actually, I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I need to put a little bit more black in this top uh, wing first. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up uh, black, not the watered down kind, just the regular kind. And I'm going to put some um, darkness kind of at the, make sure that I've got enough darkness at the edge of this um, wing in through here. So I'm going to get this to fade from really kind of black into this kind of transparent area. So I started with the full black and now I'm putting a touch of water on my brush just to kind of pull this back almost to make it look like there's little kind of veins in the um, in the wing. This is going to give you a really interesting illusion to it. So again just a little bit of that black and then you can add a touch of water to give you these little veins. I'm also going to put a touch of uh, regular black along the along the edge of this uh, wing because there's going to be um, little colored dots in a minute so I'm just kind of enhancing some of this darkness around the edge and then of course you can use a little bit of the water in order to just make sure it blends in as much as you want. So darker black along this edge, pull it in, and then same thing along the um, outer tip of it, and then you just pull it in. So that way you've got um, that transparency still visible, but you've got the intensity of the blackness of the wing. I can also take my regular black and do a couple of little um, accentuated black marks along the tip of this um, of this wing in through here. So just taking a little bit of regular black and just accentuating a couple of these little these little tips in through here. I'm now going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start making the markings that I want on here. So I um, want to have a couple of different things happen. There's some polka dots along the edge, there's some uh, white polka dots, and there's some orange polka dots, and there's also an underlining kind of like teal color. So I'm going to do the teal color first, and then we'll work our way to the other colors. So I have pre-mixed my, cu my custom color here. What this is, is just cobalt blue and yellow. So it's almost like a, um, 
be cross between a thalo blue and a thalo green, so somewhere in this vicinity, so I'll just call it teal, <laughs> so something like this is going to work, kind of like a peacock type of uh, color, and once I've got that in there, I can put it right on this white, and you're going to be able to see it really well. It's going to be this nice, vibrant color. I'm going to put a couple of different sections. I'm going to put a little section in through here, and I'm just kind of rubbing it into the um, this midsection like this, and then I'm going to do another little section in through here. So kind of just squiggly lines is going to give me um, enough of a section that is going to aid in what I want to do. Now I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush and just kind of putting a touch of that color up into this section, so just laying it on top there. And then I'm going to put some of this on the tail. So I've got a little extra on my brush and I'm just putting it on top and kind of in between those little white polka dots. Yours could be more blue than mine or more green than mine, whatever works for you. That's looking good. I'm going to now put, I want to put a little bit more of the black in through here. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up a little bit more of the watered down black feel like this needs to be just a little bit darker in through here. So this is a little bit of that watered down black just to give me a little bit deeper tone in through here. Yeah, that looks better to me. And a little bit more black maybe on the bottom side of this tail in through here just so I can see it good enough. All right, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush now and I'm going to put some nice bright white polka dots. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up white paint. I'm going to do a couple of little polka dots down the edge of this exterior or the top wing in through here, maybe a couple of little dots in through here, and then I'm going to put some down the bottom wing in through here. So like this, just kind of find your find your groove in between maybe those black spots. Ooh, I want to put some of that green in this little tail part too. I'll do that in a minute. I'm going to put a couple of these bright white polka dots in through here. I'm going to also put some in through this section here. This is going to be the base for my orange polka dots, but I know I want to have a nice bright white base to them so they really pop and are super vibrant. So I'm starting them with white paint and I'm just making these, these round little polka dots in this lighter section that we had left between the um, that um, teal section. I think I'm going to put a couple in through here as well, just going up this little section like that. That looks good. I'm wiping my brush off. I'm picking up some of that teal color, put it in this little tail part or this little wingy ding part in through here. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up black paint now and I'm drawing a outline around these polka dots. So this is going to make them really pop. You don't have to put it around all of them, but if you want them to really pop out, you can put this beautiful black outline around them and it's going to, it'll just really give them that extra bit of oomph that, oops, I didn't want to do that one, <laughs> but you can you can do it to these ones. You can, if you want a little bit around these guys, you don't have to overdo it. Think of this as just like the, the decorative kind of veins and stuff that are in between those colors. I'm going to bring, I just put a little bit of water on my brush with that black. I'm going to put a little bit of veins going in this um, wing in through here. I'm going to do the same thing with the top one. So just a little bit of black plus uh, water. Again, just adding little veins that are going to help make this a little bit more realistic. And I'm only able to do this because I used the transparent black initially. And now I can just kind of add all these little details on top of it. If I had gone fully black to start, I wouldn't have been able to add these extra um, cool details. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put my orange in these um, other polka dots. So I'm going to create an orange with red and yellow. I mean uh, pink and yellow. I don't have red on my palette. So I've got pink here and yellow. And this is going to create this uber bright like fluorescent type of um, orange color which is going to look fabulous in the center of these uh, markings. So something somewhere in this vicinity you can make it more yellow or more pink, whatever works for you visually. That's looking pretty fancy to me, so I'm going to use that, and I'm going to just put some dots in these little guys in through here. 
and then I'm going to let this dry and if there's any little fiddling that I want to do after this I certainly will but we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you get your butterfly done put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm doing the base coat for my flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are blue, pink, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a purple color, and we're gonna use that as the base coat for the petals. I have magically pre-mixed my color. I will show you how I got there. This is the color that I'm going for here. How I got to that was mostly pink, a teeny touch of white, I don't need much white, just a little bit to help with the opacity, and then blue paint. So blue and pink is gonna make this beautiful purple color, and the uh, touch of white in there is gonna help a little bit with my opacity. Again, this is just the first layer, so I'm not terribly concerned about it covering perfect, but um, that touch of white will help a little bit. So that's the color I'm headed for. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be making my um, base coat for my petals. So this type of flower can have, when I was looking at it, can have like four to six petals on each flower. In my head, I'm gonna do the variety that has four petals, but you could certainly make them any way that you want. The shape of the petal is kind of like, if, if this is the, I'll do one kind of over, here so you can see the basic shape. If this is, we'll say, the center of the flower, the petal kind of comes from the center in almost like a, not a total diamond type of a shape, but something similar to that. And you can have them coming out, you know, as as many as you want, and, the, and they can come out in different directions, but they kind of take on this little bit of a diamond type of a shape. I, you know, you can have them on the rounder side too. It's gonna be all what kind of direction you're kind of looking at them at, but I was finding that there's such variety in these. Um, it, you don't have to color in the center either. That was just to show you where the center was. Um, in these flowers that climb up vines, um, and I was finding this one specific kind, I, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce it correctly. It's like, cl Clem clematis or something, <laughs> but it comes in different colors. There's a lot of these really cool purple ones, so that's what I'm choosing to do. So I'm gonna do a bunch that have four petals, and then I'll do some that are looking from the side, um, and little pops of, you know, maybe a, a single petal poking out here and there. I'm gonna do my main ones that are gonna be kind of looking at the viewer first, and then I will make other ones, the little side ones and stuff. So this one I think is gonna be Pretty, pretty much looking at the viewer. I'm gonna use these petals in through here to kind of dictate um, where I put, or use the leaves in there to dictate kind of where I put these petals. And you can, they don't have to come, you know, straight out at perfect angles. You can get them to kind of uh, lean over one another. You can get them to kind of curl out a little bit. That's, again, the beauty of flowers is when we look at them from different angles, they take on a different appearance with the, um, the petal structure. So just when, when I'm doing flowers, oh, that, I, I want that one to be bigger. When I'm doing flowers, all I do is I, I concentrate in my head the characteristics, the characteristics of that specific flower that I wanna paint. So if I'm doing this particular flower and the characteristic that I was seeing that just kind of transcended from one to the next was this kind of diamond type of a shape um, petal, that's, what I, that's where my head goes. And I can say, all right, well, maybe this petal we're seeing, it's curling up, but I still have that kind of diamond-esque type of shape to it. Or, you know, that's where I can, I can build it from. If I wanna have just a, a little one kind of popping out over the, over the side, well, maybe we just see a pointy tip from it that is, you know, the extra part of that diamond or that little tippy part. Well, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to put that in front. <laughs> My brush got away from me on that one. So that's gonna be one that's gonna be hiding behind that leaf. And I didn't 
touch it in the center. It doesn't matter if you touch it in the center because we're going to be doing um, fun ones later. But if I want, you know, maybe a couple kind of coming up off the side of my canvas, I can just put that, you know, kind of pointy petal that has, you know, the illusion of maybe the, the top part of that diamond and put a couple of them down there. If I want a couple of tiny ones in through here, maybe I just see the side of a little tiny one over in through here. So I wouldn't necessarily see the whole diamond type of shape for that particular um, flower. I might just see the, the edges of it. Maybe this one I, I'm seeing the exterior portion of it. So I'm not going to again see the whole shape of that that petal but I can certainly give it the essence of the tip of that flower in through here if I've got a leaf that you know needs a little disguising let's I'll just put a couple of little petals <laughs> in through there as if they're you know that leaf is covering the whole flower you can have fun put little ones wherever you want maybe I want just a little a little baby one in through here that's just kind of popping out this little crevice of the of the um, lattice so that just looks you know like the tiny little petals you can just have fun with this it's not it's not intended to um, you know, be photorealistic. It's not intended to stress you out. <laughs> we just have fun while painting. So when I'm going through the, this process, I'm thinking, okay, you know, where do I want some extra color pops? Maybe I want one up in through here and up in through here. So again, I'm kind of using that thought process of that, that petal shape in order to, to guide my brush into you know making something that could look representational i kind of want a big one here and i'm gonna get rid of this pretty squiggly mark but i'll put another one on when i'm <laughs> when, when i go to do the details of my uh of my vines and stuff but i kind of want a flower in through it and don't be afraid to put a petal in front of another petal that's what mother nature does there's you know she doesn't care if there's a, a beautiful flowers sitting behind the one that you want to make she just puts them wherever she wants so that's you know when I'm painting as well I'm constantly saying okay you don't need it to be organized especially flowers because flowers unless you're planting them in a row in a nursery they can really be chaotic and fun and in different directions so don't feel that they have to be in a perfect way they can be overlapping one another you can you know, make them into whatever way that you want. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using, uh, we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it, put as many as you want. I'm thinking I've got a good assortment there. You can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to finish my vines and my leaves. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, yellow, white, and green. And if I need to use any other colors, I will, and I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be adding a second layer to my vines, and then I'm going to pop in a little bit of a highlight. And same thing with my leaves. I'll be doing a second layer on them to make sure that I have good coverage, and then I'll be adding... A highlight on them in order to make them pop out a little bit and if I need to add little shadows I will as well so on my vines I'm gonna start with uh, brown and yellow on my brush so I have brown and yellow on my brush at the same time and I'm just gonna kind of trace over them again this is where if I had any spots where I wanted to um, add additional marks, I could certainly do that. So if I'm going through this and I'm saying, hmm, I really wish that I had another little squiggly mark, another little um, fun twisty twirly one, I can do that in this step right now. This will be my my time to take care of that if I, if I had spaces that I wanted to fill or if I wanted to, you know, like in through here, maybe I've got um, let me just do this little guy in through here, but uh, let's see, let's say maybe I wanted a little cute squiggly one 
in through here. I can just add it. I don't have to um, avoid doing stuff like that because I didn't do it on the first round. Know that you can always add these little bits of details whenever you want. If, you, if you're going through the process and you're saying, gosh, those they're cute, I want more of them, <laughs> then go ahead and add more. You don't have to um, limit yourself to what you did on the first round. Or if one doesn't make sense, like this one, I didn't put enough leaves or petals around it, so maybe now we just give it a an extra little curl. <laughs> you know, let it let it come out and, and shine as much as it wants to. But again, right now I'm just kind of putting a second coat with my brown and my yellow, and then I'm going to add a bit of a highlight on them, which is going to give them um, a three-dimensional type of look to them. The uh, yellow addition with my brown is giving it a nice earthy type of tone to it, allowing it to look a little bit um, more realistic. So there's pieces of my vine that are now hiding behind petals and leaves and stuff. So those you can just avoid. You don't have to do a second coat on those. Just do the ones that are still popping out um, from behind. Uh, or on the side of your your leaves and stuff. So this way you don't have to overpaint any any areas. I think I want to put a couple more little curly cues maybe in this area. I mean, just sticking out little little fun places wherever you want. They can be they can be anywhere. They can be everywhere. You just make them anywhere that's tickling your fancy. <laughs> you can put another one in through here if you want to. I have a um, issue with putting them, making them all look the same, so I'll probably stop now because <laughs> we're gonna have a whole bunch of curly cues that just look exactly the same. Except for this one I'm gonna add right here. We're gonna add that one there. <laughs> I put it in the different direction, so that helped me. And then again, it, uh, getting these to um, makes sense. So if you have ones that are just partially clipped off somewhere, now's the time to, you know, give them their their second life or their finishing kind of traveling area where they're going to be coming to or from. And again, I can still sense some of mine are a little transparent, which I'm going to take care of right now with my highlight. So now what I'm going to do, without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna give these little kind of quick swipes along my um, vines. So I know that I just put wet paint on there. My paint is still wet. Plus I have wet paint uh, or those other colors, brown and yellow on my brush. So this is just letting all of these colors kind of blend together and giving me the um the the highlight pop that i need to to or that i want for them to pop out so if it becomes too white you can reload with brown yellow and white which is what i just did because i don't want it to turn too white so now i have all three colors on my brush brown yellow and white and you can do it in whatever intensity that you want if you want yours really light then add more white if you need to just um add a little bit of lightness so you can help with the opacity and you don't want it to go super white, then use more of the brown and the yellow on your brush with a touch of white. The um, using multiple colors on your brush like this allows you to get various colors um, with one brush stroke. And that is a great way to put or attain the diversity in colors without working too hard at it. It allows you to get a nice natural look to it. Uh, people use this a lot on painting petals on flowers. I use it in almost everything that I do because I, I like to just have things happen the way that they want to happen as opposed to me forcing it to do a specific thing. So that's looking good to me. I think the vines are pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush to do my, my leaves. So my leaves, again, I'm going to do a second coat on them and then just add highlights. So I've got my darker leaves down at the bottom and they get lighter and lighter towards the top. So that's what I'm going to maintain. And leaves that are underneath um, 
flower petals, they can be dark as well. So I'm going to pick up green and brown in order to kind of put my second layer on them, on these bottom leaves. And you can see now is where you'll be able to kind of get them to separate from one another. If you've got pet or leaves that are touching one another and you want one to pop out a little bit more, you can make one a little brighter than the other one or one a little darker than the other one. So that'll be a personal preference on your part. Again, I'm using green and brown on these bottom ones in order to um, keep them nice and dark. There might be one like this one to me is a little confusing, like I don't know where it's coming from or going to. So I might add a flower petal in front of that one in a little while. And that's the, that's the key. As you're, as you're going through these, being able to determine what, what the leaf is doing, where is it coming from? This one, these ones are clear. They're coming out from underneath my flower and that's easy for me to paint. It's easy for me to read. It's easy for me to identify. But then I had this, this one here that I don't know where it's coming from or to. Not that you always need to, but it helps build the process or build that object if you if you know what it's doing. If it's coming straight at the viewer, if it is tucked behind something, it just makes your painting process easier. So these ones are again nice and behind that, so that, that works out well. I'm going to start using my green and yellow as I go up towards the top. So again, this is on my dirty brush. So I'm not doing, I'm not reloading or washing my brush. I'm just using uh, green and yellow to get my second coat on here. And as I'm working through or towards my top here, I'm using a little bit more paint on my brush just so I can get these um, to have good uh, opacity to them. So I'm using a little bit more paint so you can't see through them as well. And Again, just a second coat helps to, to um, again, kind of get your bearings straight as you're going through this final um, layer or process of these petals. This one up here, I think, is going to need some extra highlight when I get to it because it, I need it to pop out from um, or be able to have good opacity. I'm putting a little bit more green on my brush here to get this one behind. I think it would be a little bit darker. There we go. And then these little guys up here, again, green and yellow is where I'm headed for these guys. And I'm gonna, as soon as I get this second coat on, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little highlight on them. So these are these little guys in through here. And now that I've got my second coat, I'm just gonna run through with some highlights. So I'm gonna be, oh, I forgot these little guys here. I'll just give them their little second coat so we don't forget them. Um, so my highlight is just gonna be whatever I did on that plus a little bit of white. So, or yellow, for instance, these guys down here, I could probably get away with the bottom ones using yellow and green as my highlight. And then as I go towards the top, yellow, green, and white. So I'm, I washed and dried my brush and I'm picking up yellow and green. And again, I don't need to, do much. I just want to pop out um, maybe the little tips of them. So I'm just kind of swiping down little little highlights here and there. This is just going to help with your dimensional element to the leaves. I feel like I might have two leaves here. So I'm going to make this into two leaves. I've got one here and then the darker one behind it, which I'm going to actually leave that leaf. And maybe this one is now I'm kind of seeing this as the tip of it, and I'm going to put a petal back there to hide that one. So again, just green and yellow right now to um, pop these little highlights on these darker ones. And then as I get towards the top ones, I will put, um, I'll be using more white. And I'm concentrating on, you know, putting that highlight maybe where the petal or the leaf pops or um, sticks out to the viewer the most. You don't necessarily need to do it on all of them, but I'm thinking that's good for these guys down in through here. I'm going to start using yellow, green, and white. A little bit of white in my yellow and green on my brush is going to get these uh, ones as I'm going towards the top. Yellow, green, and a little bit of white. And I'm just kind of popping 
uh, on the little edges where I feel that these um, some of these leaves would just be sticking out a little bit more. So you don't need to do it on all of them, just the ones that you feel might pop out a little bit more. This one needs a little bit more attention because I can see right through it. So we're going to put a little bit more yellow and white on that. And then once I've got this done, I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. This guy needs a lot of white and yellow in order to uh, make sure that it's not see-through. So that's just a, a trick to we're going to make that one nice and bright and sunshiny. This one too. These are getting lots of sunshine on them so we can't see through them. <laughs> and then we're going to get this one nice and bright too. So this is yellow green, mostly yellow and white, but a little bit of green. And then we're going to pop little bits on here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then once you've got this done, we're going to actually use the small brush for the next step. So make any little adjustments that you want to your to your leaves and your vines, and then you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and I think that little tip's gonna pop out, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint shadows. So I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be painting shadows all over the place. I want this to really scream sunshiny day. So in order for me to do that, I've gotta put some kind of deep shadows in here uh, and just shadows to make it work. So I wanna have a shadow from my butterfly on this little area here. I wanna have little shadows from some of my vines. I wanna make sure that wherever I need some deep shadows in my petals and my leaves that I've accounted for that. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm mostly going to be using brown and black with a little bit of water, but there may be times that I have to um, alter that color a little bit. And if I do, I will, and I'll let you know. So for my shadows, I like my paint to be very transparent because for me, a shadow is the whatever the object that the shadow is being cast upon, it's that only a little darker. So for me, if I just use something transparent like a black and a brown with water in it or liquid medium, it's going to be transparent, which means it's gonna take on the color underneath. So I have black, brown, and water on my brush right now. So I, for instance, if I take this and just kind of emulate kind of the shape of that particular object, on this object with that transparent paint, now I have a believable shadow. So I can do that in as many places as I want. So I'm assuming my light source is up above, really bright, really shiny, so I can create a lot of shadows just based on knowing where that is. I can take in through here, maybe I want a shadow in through here, and they can take on the shape of the object that they are being cast upon. So I just did this in a round fashion. That would kind of indicate that there's a little round top to it, um, but you could certainly have fun with that as much as you want. I'm gonna put a little, finish this one in through here. And again, the shadows are gonna be created based on the object that's above it, but it can take on lots of, it can be skewed. So if I want this leaf to have a shadow it may have a shadow on this object here, but it might come down and cascade into this little piece in through here. So you can really pull those shadows down pretty far. You just wanna make sure that you're putting them on the lattice and not in the sky. So that's just a little tricky part that you just wanna make sure that you don't um, make that that easy error to make. So I'm gonna put some in through here. And if the shadow is a little away from the object like that, it's gonna make that object um, appear as if it's uh, three dimensional and popping out away from the, um, away from the thing that it's casting its shadow on. So something like this is gonna give me that. I can hop down here. Oops, I need a little more water on my brush. I can put a little shadow coming in this direction. That was a little too black for me, so I just wiped my brush off. I'm gonna pull some of that off so it's not that dark. You can have black shadows. There's nothing 
wrong with having black shadows, but I think um, for me, as I'm doing this process, I, I, I'm not sold on them being totally black in this bright day that we're having or that this object is having. So if you want to use more brown, you can certainly use more brown, but you want to just emulate some of the shapes. I'm not going to do all of them. I just want to kind of give you a real good um, kind of idea of what they would appear as. If I wanted this leaf to cast a shadow, I can kind of pull out a little pokey area like that. If I want a shadow underneath my um, petals onto a leaf, I can do those pretty darn dark. So I can pull a real dark shadow onto that leaf and that's going to give me some great dimensional elements. So you can, um, I think I need some good shadow in there. You can really have fun with the shadows as they're being cast upon like your leaves and stuff because they can take on any type of, um, they're going to take the shape from the object that's casting it, but they can, you can see just like little pieces of it. So that's, again, another thing that makes it look very realistic. I want a little shadow over here, away from this, but of that. <laughs> so I'm putting lots of them up top, and then I'm going to put some in the, um, in the, the flowers and stuff down here. I'm going to be more aggressive with my darkness in here. So I'm going to put a little bit more black on this guy. So this is, as I'm getting down towards the, the bottom, or where I feel we could, you know, get away with maybe a little bit more darker shadows, I can certainly, certainly be more aggressive with the darkness. And I don't, again, I don't need to do it on everything. Just uh, you know, a few here and there is going to give me, it's going to be pretty darn powerful and it's going to um, give me some good, good information for the viewer to understand. I feel like I want to put maybe something in through here, maybe a little bit more water on my brush. Like this whole one is kind of casting a shadow on that piece. Just pull this down here and then maybe on this piece as well. But again, I don't want to go into my my um, background. So that's something I just have to be pretty mindful of as I'm as I'm doing these shadows, just not going into that sky because you wouldn't see a shadow in the sky unless there was clouds and and if the flower was above those clouds. So just be careful of things like that. I'm going to bring this just a little bit darker underneath this guy. And again, you can really have, you know, take a long time to get these on or just be pretty carefree. Maybe this little guy's got a shadow that it's casting on this little piece and maybe over in through here. And then you just play with that. And maybe I'll put a little dark shadow underneath here. You can use these shadows to help separate your petals from your leaves, vice versa. Like if I want this one to kind of uh, show a separation between that one, I can put a little shadow in through there. And that just helps make it look a little bit more realistic. And then once you've got these done, once you've got all your fun shadows done, you can. Um, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So you can just wash and dry or put this small brush away. If I can ever stop making cute little shadows, you can put this small brush away, take out your um, medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our petals. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using my purple, pink, uh, and white. I think that's all I'm gonna use. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna approach it like I approached the leaves and the, um, the vines, which is I'm gonna do a second coat with my purple and then I'm going to add some highlights with my pink and my white. So I'm going to be using um, my purple. I just picked up my purple. <laughs> I'm going to be doing just a second coat on my petals. So this is going to be, uh, again, allow me to give pretty good coverage as well as kind of in my head 
just kind of looking at them again and saying, okay, well, I got three here. Which one I'm gonna, am I going to want to have kind of in front of the other one? You know, you can kind of start to plan out the process of adding your highlights. You can use this, um, this second coat also as a time if you wanted to add another petal, which we have talked about a couple times for this area in through here. So this is getting another petal right in through here. I'm gonna put this one kind of right on top of here. We're gonna see the side of it and it's gonna have a leaf kind of coming out on the other side. Maybe maybe we're gonna we're gonna add another one right in here too. <laughs> This one's going to be an odd shaped. Maybe we'll even add a fifth one. We're going to get wild and crazy with this one. It's going to be a, 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 an assortment of, of leaves or petals in through there. And then, um, so you can use that thought process as you're going through this second coat to say, okay, I really think I need a space filler here. Or I really want to, you know, hide this under here. And you can, as you're coming through this second coat. And you might not even want a second coat. Maybe you love the um, the way that first coat is and you don't wanna touch it. But for me, coming and doing this second coat, again, ensures that I have full coverage on everything. It helps me to um, give a kind of a final shape on them. It also is going to help as I put put my um, highlight because this is so fresh of paint, even if it kind of dries by the time I get down to the, um, to the first petal that I had done, it, it's still new enough where it can um, aid in putting a quick highlight on, especially if it's still a little moist, it's gonna help give me a nice um, simple way to add that highlight on top of it with um, with that paint being kind of fresh and still possibly open a little bit. And then again, I'm just kind of going through these, giving myself that second layer on here. And again, these uh, flowers can come in different different type of colors and things of that nature. So you could do um, maybe a lighter version or a more blue version or a more pink version, whatever, you know, color is, you know, visually appealing to you. You could even make them darker at the bottom and lighter at the top, which I will do a little bit as I add that highlight to them just to give them that uh, additional sunshine on the top of them. And you might find after this second coat that you want a third coat before we start adding highlights. So that's going to be wherever your preference in, 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 you know, the paint being fully non-see-through is I can still see through some of my paint on this second coat, which again, I'm all right with. I know that I'm going to have my, my little highlight that's going to help to um, disguise any of that. Oops, I missed these petals over here. Um, but if you felt that based on whatever type of paint that you have, if you felt that you needed a third coat before you started adding um, the highlights, you could certainly go ahead and do that. And then once I've got this second coat on here, I'm going to um, start adding my highlights. So my highlight, I'm gonna be doing um, a lot of pink and a little bit of white without washing my brush. So again, I'm gonna start down at the bottom. Let me hit these couple of petals for a second coat before I start adding my highlights. Um, I'm gonna be starting at the bottom, which is where my, my darker stuff is. So I've got my purple still on my brush. So I'm gonna use purple and pink. And again, I'm just kind of adding this additional color into these petals. You could, again, use more or less. It will get darker as it dries, the pink, because it's on top of that dark purple. So knowing, me knowing that I'm okay with the, um, the vibrancy of it at this point, but um, if you're not or not sure, just do one, let it dry, and then 
as you go through the process, if you want to make it lighter or darker, you can certainly do that. And again, right now I'm just using the um, purple and pink on my brush. I had a lot of the purple on my brush, so I didn't really pick up more of the purple, but I, I definitely have a little bit on there. And I'm just kind of swiping it down with this one brush stroke type of technique where I've got multiple colors on my brush, allowing me for to get this um, variety of tonal values and, and colors within these petals. And again, just my pink and my purple right now, kind of loosely um, adding this, this highlight. And I will put a little bit of white on them in a second, just getting this pretty highlight on. It's making me very happy, I can tell you that. <laughs> Sometimes just adding one little one little element to the painting is like, oh yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> so you'll you'll find that someday you know you're gonna be painting and be like, oh my god, I only needed to do that to make it the way that I wanted. It's a fun process. So now I'm picking up purple, pink, and white on my brush. I have all three colors on my brush. So as I get towards these top ones. I'll blend that in a little bit more in a second, but as I get towards these top ones, I'm gonna have a little bit more brightness on them and um, it'll help with just, again, telling that sunshine story. So I've got all three colors on my brush, making sure I've got this colored in the way that I want to. And you can, again, make them lighter or darker, whatever works for you. I'm not terribly concerned about showing veins or any any real distinct detail on these petals. I'm just looking to give them a um, pretty authentic shape to the petal and um, get this one's laying in front of the other one and to um, just have a nice pretty painting. <laughs> I don't when you're when you're going for just kind of a pretty painting or one that you're just learn you know wanting to learn how to do a specific type of flower, don't worry about the fine-tuned details. Just worry about, you know, getting things in place, getting good composition so you understand what you're looking to do and and having fun. Those are the main main important parts of it. And if you want to fiddle with these more, feel free to do so. I'm going to be using my small brush for the next step. So, oh, I miss, miss this little guy in through here. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the centers of the flowers. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using brown, tan, and white. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating a little, um, darker spot in the middle of them and then they've got these kind of like spiral hairy things around the dark center. <laughs> so I'm going to start with brown and tan on my brush at the same time. I don't need to do this to all of them because I don't see the centers of all of them but the ones that I do see I'm going to um, just kind of speckle in this brown and tan so I've got kind of a circular type of area within that center like that. Uh, I think I would see this little guy in through here. So the smaller the flower, the smaller the area. I can't see that one, I can see this one. And they can have pretty um, big areas for these centers. So I'm gonna just make sure that I've connected or given an area that looks like all of the um, petals can be connected to. So that's good in through there. Maybe a little bit more tan on that one. That was a little bit too dark something like that. And again, brown plus tan are on my brush, giving myself this little darker center. And I say that because when I put the little white hairy things on, you'll be able to see how, how much darker the center is than the little white hairy things I'm gonna be putting on. Um, and I apologize for those of you who know what the little white hairy things are called. <laughs> At the moment, I, it is eluding my, my brain, so we're just going to call them little hairy things. So brown and um, tan continues to be on my brush, and I'm just dotting in a circular type of shape in the center of the flowers that I can see. And I'm going to do one more right in through here. And then once I've got that on there, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna be putting the little white hairy things on. So this is gonna be with white paint and I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna be doing these 
um, little curved type of lines around that center area. So just kind of popping it out, it overlaps the edge a little bit and it's kind of in a spiral type of way, at least the ones that I was seeing. So that's what I'm trying to emulate in through there. And I'm going to do that to all the ones that I um, put the centers on. So I'm not touching my canvas really hard right now, just kind of putting these little little things on there and then I'm going to continue on that quest for the rest of them. So again, just white paint is giving me these little marks and I'm kind of curving them as I'm doing them and I'm running through wet paint in some areas so I'm just kind of rolling with it and letting it happen but if you felt that you needed to wait for that um, that base coat to dry, that little center that we put on there, you could certainly let that dry. And I'm, I'm leaving some of that darker center in there. You don't want to cover it all up, just um, allowing for it to have that dimensional element in the center is what I was seeing. So that's what I'm trying to emulate. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do these little ones in through here. The small ones, obviously, you can't see as much detail, so don't, worry too much about those and then just kind of getting as much detail as I can without again stressing over it just little tiny lines along the edges if you can get them to kind of spiral or poke out a little bit of extra that's great and then I've just got these last two little ones to go and then once I've got this done again you could you could sit and fiddle with this as much as you want you might find after it dries that you want to do another little layer on the white pieces if they sometimes they'll take on of course the color that's behind them so if they didn't pop enough uh, br get uh, bright enough for you you could certainly come back and do a second little coat on them and then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. On this one, I think I'm going bottom left. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use brown paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date, or a symbol, or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful floral image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.